All right, so we've got Unreal Engine installed. It's time to unpack what an Unreal project actually looks like. Now, you may have already figured out how to create a project on your own, but I encourage you to still take the time to watch this video because we're going to dive into some things that you may not have known about. In this video, we're going to go over the three key elements of an Unreal Engine project. So go ahead, open up your Epic Games Launcher, and let's dive right in. Our first step to creating a project is to launch Unreal. With the launcher open, make sure you're in the Unreal Engine category. We're going to go to our library tab and click the launch button for the version of Unreal that we want to launch. You can also click the launch button up here if you have it set to the version you normally use. For this course, let's open up the newest version we have installed which at the time of this recording is Unreal Engine version 5.1. Now, launching Unreal for the first time can take a while and there are a couple of spots where it might look like it's hanging or frozen. So if it looks like it's stuck on 45% for a few minutes, don't worry. It's going to do a lot of work in the background to get the workspace ready for you. So go ahead and pause this video, go make yourself a snack and come back when the project window is opened. All right, key element number two, actually creating the project. The project window can be very overwhelming with all of the options available to you. Unreal Engine is a powerful beast with uses across several different industries. Once you know what you're doing and you're creating a project specifically for one of these industries, you'll know which option to select. For just starting out, I recommend going to the Games tab, where we're going to select the third person template. Now, the reason why I recommend the third person template for just starting out is twofold. Reason number one, it provides a human sized character that you can easily drop in and use for scale reference in anything that you are doing. Reason number two, you can drop in and play as this character to run around your scene in real time. All right, so we have our third person template selected. Now, looking at the options over here on the right, we can choose between Blueprint or C++. This is referring to the main style of code we want to start with. Keep in mind that this selection is largely arbitrary because regardless of what you select here, any project can and likely will use both C++ code and Blueprint. It's typically easier and faster to start with Blueprint, even if you plan on using C++ later in the project. Now, we'll go over what exactly Blueprint is in a later video. For now, we're just going to select that option. We'll leave the target platform as desktop and quality preset at maximum. For this learning project, we'll go ahead and include the starter content, which I'll touch on a little bit later. For ray tracing, we're going to go ahead and leave that turned off for now. The ray tracing option can improve visuals if you have a video card that supports it. If your video card has RTX or RX in the name, then you can go ahead and use it. Otherwise, ray tracing won't work on your system. This is true for any client users you deploy a package project to as well. Now it does take time for the computer to prepare a project for ray tracing. So for now, even if your card does support it, we're gonna leave it off for this project. We wanna get into our project and working as fast as possible. Next. We need to determine where we want to save our project. The default option in my documents might not always be the best. I like to create a folder on my hard drive specifically for my Unreal Engine projects, as close to the root as possible. This is really helpful for reducing the length of file path names. Next, we're gonna pick a name for our project. For this one, we can just call it My First Unreal Project. Now, You'll notice I typed this all as one word. This is because you can't use spaces in your name. Alternatively, you can use something like underscores in place of spaces, or you can use camel casing. Camel casing is when you capitalize the first letter of each word in the phrase. How you name this will largely come down to your personal preferences. All right, once that's all set, go ahead and click create. Now we let the engine build our project and we wait. Now that the project is open, the first thing we're going to do here is click the little X to close it. Counterintuitive? Maybe. 
but we're doing this so we can learn how to open our projects each time we want to work on them. This brings us to the third key element, the project folder. Now you'll see here in our library, there is a my project section. This lists all of the projects you've opened with Unreal on this specific computer. You can open a project from here by double clicking the icon, but this list can grow to an overwhelming size pretty fast as you work on more projects. So let's look at another way to open our projects up. Remember how we set a project folder location when we created the project? Now we wanna actually navigate to that folder on our computer using Windows Explorer or Finder if you're on a Mac. Here I am in my project folder location. In it, you can see a folder with our project's name. If we go into that folder, we'll see several other folders in a project file. Now, double-clicking this file will open our project. This will be our main and preferred way of opening projects. So it can be helpful to create a shortcut to it. If you're on Windows, you can right-click it, go down to Send To, and then Desktop Create Shortcut. Now we have a shortcut on our desktop that we can double click to open the project moving forward. If you're on a Mac, you'll do the same thing by right clicking on it and select make alias to create a shortcut on your desktop. Now, looking back at our folder structure, you'll see several different folders. Let's do a brief rundown. Config, this is where you'll find certain configuration files that pertain to settings in an individual project. We won't be editing any of these directly, but instead we'll be looking at how to update these settings directly in the editor in a later video. Now, content is where the bulk of your project lives. This, along with config and the project file itself, are the bare bones of any Unreal Engine project. We'll be looking at how we manage this folder using the editor's content browser in the next video. Derived data cache is exactly what it sounds like. If you're ever working on a professional Unreal Engine project and you hear someone mention the DDC, this is what they're referring to. No, the DDC isn't some government agency we need to worry about. This folder is a cache storage for dynamically generated data. The contents are constantly changing, and this is one of the folders that could actually be deleted without breaking your project, because the data itself will be regenerated the next time you open Unreal. Our next folder in the list, Intermediate, is another one of those folders that can be safely deleted and automatically regenerated. Think of this folder as your project's temporary folder for local user data. Keep in mind that this folder does contain your locally compiled shaders, so while you might not include this folder in source control or when sharing the project folder, deleting it does mean that Unreal will have to compile shaders again the next time you open it. The next folder, saved, is your local user-related content. This means any local user settings as well as where things like your screenshots and rendered videos will be saved. We'll go into that more in depth later, but this is another folder that you generally would not include for things like sharing the project or uploading source control. All right, now you should be a little bit more familiar with Unreal Engine projects. Congrats on making it through one of the more boring topics, but understanding the structure of projects is essential knowledge if you're serious about working with Unreal Engine. To recap, we looked at how to launch Unreal Engine and create a new project using the third person starter template in the games tab. We looked at how to open an existing project and create a shortcut to our project file. And finally, we deconstructed the project folder to see what makes an Unreal Engine project tick. In the next video, we'll get into the more exciting stuff and start to learn how to navigate around the interface. I'll see you there.